This is a video on parametric instability. You should first watch our video called Parametric Excitation. Uh, to motivate this, let's look at something that we did in another video called Period of Simple Harmonic Motion. This is a mass on a spring, and we, look at, we looked at vertical motion here, or longitudinal motion. And what we found is that the period of this small amplitude motion here, the time for one cycle, is the same as the period at any other amplitude, in particular a, a pretty big amplitude. It's the same value. Okay, now let's ask what seems to be a simple question here. What happens if we change the mass? Well, I'm going to replace it with a smaller mass. Okay, now it's, uh, we should get because there's less inertia, we should get a shorter period. And you can see here that the period of small amplitude motion is shorter, and the period of large amplitude motion should be the same, should be shorter. Okay, but there's a problem. Look at that. We've, energy has gone into a pendulum type motion. And you can do this all day long, okay, no matter how carefully you try to excite this longitudinal mode. Above an amplitude threshold, it's, the mode is going to be unstable. It'll go into pendulum motion. So what's going on here? Well, the short answer is parametric excitation. Um, and in the previous video, we looked at different cases, and one of the cases was length modulation of a simple pendulum. So I can do this here. Um, I have a simple pendulum, and I am now modulating the length. And you can see my, the drive frequency here is approximately twice the pendulum frequency. Whenever you modulate an oscillator, whenever you modulate a parameter upon which the frequency depends, you can get parametric excitation. So what's happening here <coughs> is, here I'm externally driving the system. Here, the system's not being externally driven. It's a mode, it's a mode of the system that is parametrically driving a pendulum mode. And it's parametrically driving it by length modulation. This mode is modulating the length of one of the two pendulum modes here. Now, I need to say something else about this, because it's important. Um, for small amplitudes, the longitudinal mode here is uncoupled from either of the pendulum modes. By uncoupled, we mean there's no, they don't influence each other, OK? I, I can excite this and nothing happens, it just the energy just stays there, and I can excite a pendulum mode and nothing stay, it, it stays there too, okay? What happens at bigger amplitudes is other forces come into play here, forces between the two modes, from one mode on the other. And we call that nonlinearity, and we need that here to understand what's happening. If the modes were uncoupled, I could put this, drive this at very high amplitude and it will never excite the pendulum mode. Okay, one more thing. We're exciting this a pendulum mode here. Where's that energy coming from? It's not coming from me. This is not, it's, this, is not an, this is not an externally driven system. The energy, there's only one place it can come from. It comes from the longitudinal mode. So the amplitude of that mode has to go down. When you, and it's a little bit difficult to see, but now you can see it. It's going down, okay? It has to by energy conservation. Okay, so this parametric instability phenomenon that we saw in this example here, it's a general phenomenon. It occurs in many different types of systems of coupled oscillators. Uh, and one interesting example happens to be very similar to this. A ship at sea will bob up and down due to waves hitting the ship, okay? If that frequency is approximately twice the rocking frequency, okay, and the amplitude is high enough, you can excite this rocking motion. This has actually happened to ships at sea, and the rocking motion can be severe, 
Okay, and it has, it, it has caused extensive damage in ships. So it's something that's to be avoided. Okay, let's look at one more example of parametric instability. Here's a system of two coupled pendulums. They're identical pendulums, okay? And a standard demonstration that's done here is a small amplitude de demonstration of what we call beating. Okay, if I start the energy off in one of the pendulums, <coughs> you can see that it's driving the other pendulum. And because they're identical, this is a resonance here, at one point, right about there, <coughs> almost all the energy in that pendulum has gone to this one. And now this one's driving that one. So the system is responding at two frequencies here. There's a fast frequency that you see here, relatively fast. And then there's this relatively slow frequency of energy going back and forth. And it's not, it's a dramatic demonstration and it's not really obvious what's going on. The way that it's explained is by looking at what are called the normal modes of a system, okay? The normal modes of an oscillatory system are modes where there's just a single frequency that's, uh, that's occurring, okay? So there are two normal modes here because there's two pendulums. And if you think about it, you can guess what those normal modes are, okay? Here's one of them. It's a symmetric mode, equal amplitudes in phase. There's just one frequency there, okay? What's the other one? Right. The other one is equal amplitudes, but 180 degrees out of phase, one frequency. So by superposing or adding together these two modes, you can understand the linear beating. But that's not what we're after here. What we want to ask is, what happens at larger amplitudes? Well, these normal modes, you can show, these normal modes now influence each other. There's nonlinear coupling. And so there's a chance for parametric excitation. So let's check that out. Here's the anti-symmetric mode at high amplitude, okay? And nothing's really happening. It's kind of a jerky motion of the coupling knot there. What about the symmetric mode? Well, it turns out when you solve this, you find that lurking out here is an ampl a critical amplitude, an amplitude threshold. If you're above that amplitude, and I'm above it right now, Watch what happens. I start off with this nice symmetric mode, and it goes unstable. This pendulum soaks up a, a, a lot of the energy, right? Now you can do this again and again. Sometimes this pendulum soaks up the energy, sometimes this pendulum does. It all depends, on, it's sensitive to the initial conditions. And the situation is analogous to this unstable equilibrium of a ball on a two-dimensional hill. The ball is in equilibrium here, but it's not stable. Due to fluctuations, it can go run down the hill one way or the other way. And that's analogously happening here where the energy can get soaked up by one pendulum or another pendulum. Okay, to conclude, um, when you have a system of coupled oscillators, you can get what's called a parametric instability, and this is where one mode parametrically drives another mode. And it's, it means that that mode is, the driving mode is going to be unstable. This can occur in very many different systems. It's a general phenomenon, and it can have consequences. For example, it can cause extensive damage in ships at sea. Um, one final thing, the, the theory for this, the fact that this mode is parametrically driving this mode and have, can have consequences at higher amplitude. It's not obvious, okay? But if you're interested, you can follow a link that we have to a paper that two undergraduate students and I wrote. Thank you very much for watching.